Okay. Um, do you have any access to those accounts? I have the, the fifth third card. I do not have access to either one of them. Okay. I have not been getting the bills though, so I do not know exactly what is on them. Okay. You've not made any payment um, on those three cards? On the fifth third card, I've been paying $300 a month in okay. cash. Okay. Um, tell us about the automobiles that you and Jerry purchased during the marriage. Um, uh, 2005 Honda Civic. Uh, he bought that when he was working in Detroit and he needed to go back and forth and it had really good gas mileage. So he bought that for himself to drive back and forth. Okay. But it was bought, bought during the marriage? Yes. Okay. And um, do you have it currently? I do. Did you take it with you when you left the marital home? Yes, I did. It was the most dependable of the cars. Okay. Um, how about the 2003 Pontiac Aztec? Is that in your care? No, that is in the driveway of the house. It has not been driven in six or seven years. Six or seven years? Yes, it's just been sitting there. Okay. Do you agree that somebody could come and junk it? Yes. Okay. Um, the 2004 Chrysler Town and Country. Do you have that vehicle? No, I don't. He has that. We bought that from a friend last winter. Okay. How much did you pay for it? 1500 Okay. Mm -hmm. Why didn't you take that one when you left? Because that's the car he drove back and forth to work and I don't want to drive that car. It has issues. It has a radiator leak and I don't know how to manage the problems it has. Okay. And the 2006 GMC Yukon? That was bought for me to drive. Um, I was the only one that ever drove it. I drove it all winter long every year. It started having electrical problems and the battery would go dead and all the time randomly. So I didn't take that with me. Okay. When's the last time you drove it? Um, I would have driven it in April before we left. I probably drove all of us up to church in it. April of 2023? Yes. Okay. So the 19, 19, 1999 Ford Mustang, where did that come from? He had that when I met him, but it was not paid off until after we were married. I remember writing the checks for it and mailing them in. Okay. How long did you pay on it after um, you got together? Or not? No. Why do you think that is not a his vehicle, that it's your marital vehicle? Because we were using marital money to pay it off, to make the payments on it. Okay. Okay. How many boats do the three of you have? There are three. And... Did Mr. Hardy own all three of them before you got married? No, he did not. He owned the John boat before we got married. Okay. And what about the other two? Um, the rowboat his dad gave to us as a family and the ski boat his dad also gave to us as a family. Do you ever take the rowboat or the ski boat out without him? No, I'm not very good at backing them up. And both of them are on trailers or just the ski boat? Just the ski boat. Do you have any retirement from any company? No, I do not. Okay. Do you have any savings um, accounts that we have not talked about? No, I don't. Do you have any checking accounts that we haven't talked about? I opened a checking account for my paychecks. Okay. Um, when did you do that? Um, like two months ago. Okay. And what bank is it with? Uh, Marshall Community Credit Union. Okay. You just use that for your, your checks? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any more debt or accounts with any of your children? 
No. Okay. And so you knew about um, Jerry's uh, Fidelity 401k, correct? Yes. Um, from his previous employer? Yes. Does he have any other retirement account you know about? He had one other one. I saw the papers that came to the house, the letters came to the house, but I never opened them. Okay. Where was that from? Um, I can't remember. Rosler, maybe. Okay. Are you capable of working 40 hours instead of 27 hours? It would be really hard. I would get really tired. I'd be in a lot of pain. Okay. How is working 27 hours and homeschooling the kids? How is that working for you? It's not too bad since I only work two days a week, then I can, I can take, you know, some time to rest and then we can get back into the homeschooling. And we're busy all the time. So. Okay. I think you said that you do the, um, well, what, what time of day do you normally clean the church? I usually go in the middle of the night. Okay. All right, so it doesn't take away from what you're doing with the kids. No, they're already in bed. Okay. Did you have a conversation any time with your husband over the past 10 years where he asked you to find full-time work? No, never. He wanted me to stay home and take care of him in the house and the kids. He never wanted me to work at all. Why do you say that? Because he wanted me to do everything at you know, keep the house spotless, have dinner ready when he came in the door, wash his laundry and, you know, do everything. Yeah. Okay. Did, did he do uh, things around the house, um, like mowing the lawn and, you know, um, raking leaves and that type of thing? Not very often. And he might mow three times a summer. Sometimes I could get Quentin to do it. That didn't get mowed very often at all. Like he took our part, our bathroom to fix and it, Four years later, I fixed it the rest of the way myself so we could shower again because you never finished it. Okay. Um, so you indicated that you, you want to move back into the home. Yes. Um, have you looked around um, this area to see what else you could get into with, um, with the kids? I have. We probably went and looked at a dozen houses, but they're all in really awful neighborhoods and they were all in really bad shape. Okay. Have you looked at any apartments? No, they're so expensive that I didn't. Okay. Why did you go around looking at looking at houses to move into? Because my mom said she'd help us get somewhere to stay and we needed somewhere. Okay. So you don't see that as being realistic, being able to buy just some other house right now? No, if it would have been, I would have already done it if I could have found something. Okay. There's nothing out there that isn't completely trashed and in a really bad neighborhood. That just wouldn't be safe to be in for the kids. Well, you know, you'd have to pay $95,000 to, to, to um, Mr. Party, correct? Yeah. The houses are just so expensive right now. Even the ones in really bad neighborhoods are that much money. And they don't even come with appliances and have holes in the walls and furniture. Okay. All right. So, um, when Mr. Party lost his job earlier this year, um, how did that affect you and the kids at home? It was awful. He was home all the time. It was no escape. What do you mean by that? He just, he treats us so bad. Everybody hides when he gets home. They don't come back out till he goes to bed. What kind of things would cause the kids to hide? He just comes in and he's constantly complaining about something, yelling at everybody. He's just always mean, always mad. He's always in a bad mood. You never know what it's going to set him off. He had to walk on eggshells all the time. It's exhausting. What was his mental health like earlier this year from your perspective? He's getting crazier and crazier. He's believing the weirdest conspiracy theories and he's scaring me really. I'm afraid of him. He kept threatening to commit suicide and he, I'm really afraid of him. So when you say he kept threatening to commit suicide, what was he saying? I had one time at the dinner table, I don't remember what set it off, but he said, I'm just going to go run myself into a tree. 
because I don't want to live this life anymore. He just would say things like that all the time. It got where nobody even paid attention. Did it have anything to do with the loss of his job? No, it was that was before he lost his job. Okay. I think he got fired on purpose. Why do you think that? I'm pretty sure he knew I was going to leave him. So he got fired so that he would be home to try to stop me and keep an eye on me. He was going to work and, you know, deliberately being obstinate and, and defiant and yelling at people and stuff and bad behavior at work. I'll object to that. Uh, it sounds like this is hearsay. I don't have a foundation for where she learned this from. Sustained. Yeah, that is hearsay. Wait, don't don't tell us anything you don't know, you okay. heard, or you saw. He told me that, but okay. Um, was he drinking to excess at that time? Yes, he was having like five or six beers a night most nights. On the weekends, it would be more. And um, did you smoke marijuana with him? Yeah, never around the kids, but yeah, we did. Okay, how often? Probably every evening. Okay. Did you cut that out? Yeah, I don't do that anymore. I stopped when he did. Okay. And um, did you drink alcohol when he did? No, I don't really like to drink very much. I very seldom have anything to drink. Okay. Okay. Um, what was the reason that you went to the domestic shelter? Um. I went to a lawyer and I told her I wanted to leave and I told her I was afraid of him and he's got guns in the house and that's what she advised me to do. She so, was afraid that he would hurt us. Does he have guns in the house? He does have two guns in the house. Okay. Are they handguns or rifles? Uh, rifles and a, a rifle and a shotgun, I think. And do they stay locked up? No, they're just in the bedroom closet and the ammo's right there, too. Okay. And so that was concerning to you? Yes. That was very scary to me. Okay. Um, have your fears calmed down since that time? No. Have you and, and him been alone together since that day? No. Okay. Um... What happened when you attempted to get your clothes recently? I asked him if I could come and get some of my winter clothes from that because it's getting cold and I'm cold and he wouldn't let me. I offered to come with the police or with a pastor or anybody he picked, but he wouldn't let me. Okay. Did he meet you in the car with clothes? He did. He brought three trash bags full of clothes that I couldn't take them with me. There was no way that three bags of clothes and the kids are going to fit in the car at the same time when I picked them back up and I don't have anywhere to store them. And he wouldn't let me look through them. I asked for five minutes to look through them, and he wouldn't do it. Well, what did he say when you asked him that? He said it would take too long and that he was busy and had to go. Okay. Did you offer any other ways that you could get your clothes? Yeah, I asked if I could look through them later at the church when I picked the boys back up. And, and he said no, he, that there weren't any witnesses around. And he was afraid of what I would do or something. And he didn't want to spend hours letting me look through the clothes. I just asked for five minutes, but he kept saying, no, it'll take too long. Okay. So did you get any of your winter clothes? He brought me a couple jackets. That's all I have. Okay. What about the kids? Do they have winter clothes? Yeah, they got their own stuff out of the house and brought it. Okay. So they've been able to bring things back and forth? Yeah, he lets them bring things back and forth, just not my things. Okay. Um, if you are not granted this house, um, are you going to be able to stay in this basement for much longer? They would really rather us know what they would probably let us know. Okay. We don't have anywhere else to go. Okay. Um, um, do you believe that, um, that Jerry should pay you a reasonable amount of, of spousal support going forward? Yes, I think he should have to. Okay. And what are you asking as far as the children are concerned? Um, well, the Wednesdays are really disruptive to our lives. 
and the summers are too. The, so I'd prefer it if they only went every other weekend and every other holiday. Okay. How is the Wednesday disrupted? It's just cuts our day right in half. And then we can't, we had to miss a lot of things that we could have gone to do with friends and we you can't always get all of the school work done. And it's just really disruptive. And the kids are, you know, depressed about it all day because they don't want to go. And it's just re- really disruptive to our lives. Okay. Now there's no reason that they can't go for um, Calhoun County parenting policy holiday time, correct? Right. Okay. Yeah, they could do that. Okay. And weekends seem to go fine? Yeah, weekends seem to be fine. Okay. All right. Um, are you asking the court to grant you sole physical custody of the children? Yes, please. Okay. What about legal custody? Do you feel as though you and Jerry can talk to each other and make um, decisions together? No, I do not. I, he's just almost impossible to do make any decision with. He, it's either his way or no way. I have almost no say. He's, it would be like pulling teeth. We would never agree on anything. It would be, you know, it would be a nightmare. Do you think that if a doctor made a recommendation about um, some type of treatment for one of the boys, that you could agree that that would be the right thing to do? That would be tricky. I mean, he doesn't believe in a lot of the vaccines and things, so it, it would be really hard depending on what it was. Um, does does he believe in, in COVID? No, he thinks it's fake and made up. Have any of the, the boys been vaccinated for COVID? No. How about flu shots? No, we don't get those either. How about um, other shots? Um, um, chicken pox and... Um, Mumps and measles and those types of shots. I did take them all in for those, but he insisted that I drag them out into a modified long-term schedule so they didn't get them when they were supposed to, but they did get them all. Okay. So if there was a recommendation going further about another booster or COVID shots, you don't think you could agree? No. Do you think those are important things? Yes. Okay. All right. Um. Have the two of you despised, I mean, um, in a situation where there was a child hurt, something needed to be done, that you disagreed? Yeah, there's been several times where the boys have had injuries and I thought they needed to be seen and that they needed stitches and he wouldn't let me take them to get looked at. Like Logan had a really bad cut in his finger down to the bone and Jerry wouldn't let me take him in to get it stitched and he's lost the feeling in that finger in that area and he still has no feeling in that finger. That was two years ago. So what do you mean that he wouldn't let you? Could you say, I'm going to do it and do it anyway? It would it'd be a punishment if I did. Like what would happen? I, it would be something awful. A silent treatment for a week or, or something would be destroyed or dead when I came back. You never know. Could be anything. Okay. Um. Do you have enough money at this point to pay your attorney fees? No. Okay. Do you owe, Mel, do you owe Mr. Brundage um, for mediation fees? I put it on the credit card. Okay. Um, in the $12,000 credit card? Yeah. Okay. So going forward, is it going to be rough for you to pay attorney fees? Yes, it will be. It's very okay. hard. We're barely getting by. Um, and what do you think that you will need in spousal support going forward? Anything would be helpful. We've had to go to the food bank. Okay. Now, um, when your husband was out of work, um, did you apply for state aid? Yeah, he was out of work for five weeks once and we applied for state aid, but we were denied because he had too much money in the bank and had too many cars. And so that made him very distrustful of the government and the banking. He stopped putting money in the bank after that. Started putting it in a safe in the basement instead. He would cash his checks every Saturday. It was our routine. We'd go to the bank and cash check and get breakfast. And he put it in the basement in the safe. It'd be about $6,000 every time. Did you 
um, apply for Medicaid for yourself and the kids this year? Yes, I did in May. Okay. Were you granted? Do you have um, Medicaid for yourself and the kids? Yes, me and, and, and all three of the kids and Quentin all have Medicaid. Okay. And did, did Mr. Party even mention to you that he signed the boys up for insurance with his employer? No, he didn't. I had no idea that he had insurance on them. Okay. What about Quinton? Do you think he knows he has no insurance through his dad? Yeah, he, know. he knows. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now, um, considering the payment you'll have to make to your mother and for other expenses, would you be um, asking the court for a thousand dollars a month in spousal support? Yeah, that would be great. That would help a lot. Okay. Now, your twelve thousand dollar credit card at this point. Um, was it just to keep you going and um, until you got some support? Yeah, it was just all stuff we needed, like shoes or food or car repairs that we had to have done. The ignition switch locked up on me. I couldn't drive the car. The ball joint went out. I get hit by a semi and the tire got tore up. And um, did you take some money out of the... Um, um, the joint savings account at one point when you first separated the checking account i did okay. but i was afraid to touch it so it's all just still there and a new bank account okay so how much did you take a thirteen thousand dollars and 82 and some change how much of the account was that half of it okay so it's sitting there right now yeah. Okay. Um, waiting to be granted to you by the court? Yep. Okay. All right. No other stocks, bonds, or any other asset that we haven't spoken about? I don't think so. Okay. Do you have any way to prove to the court that there was money in a safe in the basement when you left? Uh, he opened it and showed it to me a couple of times, but I have pictures, but that's all. Any way of showing the court or telling the court how much? Well, uh, one time uh, he was at his friend's house making beer and across the street the Yukon was for sale. And he called me and asked me if I wanted to come test drive it. And I did. And then he asked if I wanted to buy it. And I said, yes. And then we went home and he went into the basement and he took $10,000 in cash out of there. And we went back and bought it. It was on a Sunday. The banks were closed. And that was within the last year? No, that was six years ago, maybe. Okay. I asked him how much money was in there, and he told me over $100,000. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Mr. Umloff, uh, cross-examination. A few questions. I was a little confused about your testimony about where the boys are sleeping in the basement. Could you clarify who is sleeping where, where you're currently living? Uh, Elijah has a king size bed in the bedroom there, and Sammy and Logan both have twin size beds in the living room. And those are full beds? Yes. Could you clarify all of the subjects that you're teaching as your homeschool? We teach language arts, science, history, art, geography. And um, government, I think that's all. Those are all the subjects? Uh, math, too. Any others? Oh, uh, there's a social studies section, too. And what does that cover? Um, just different cultures in the world and how they live, things about them, people that live there. Any others? I think that's all. It, do you know when um, the three boys that are still under 18 are on track to graduate? Um, Sammy's on track to graduate in the spring. 
And the other on, two are on track to graduate on time also. So Sandy would be on track to graduate in the spring of next year? Yeah. And do you know when the other two are on schedule to uh, graduate? You just said uh, on time. Um, Logan's in ninth grade and he has four years left of, of work to do. Elijah's in seventh grade and he has six more years of work to do. He is on track to be done with that on time. I, did I hear you say you try to go to church every week on, unless you're working at the time? No, I babysit occasionally. If I'm babysitting, okay. then I'm not there. Okay. How often do you babysit? Lately, it's been every Sunday or every other Sunday, but before that, it wasn't quite as often. Okay. How much do you make from babysitting? I don't babysit for money. Okay. So you get no income from this? No. Who do you babysit for? It's a friend's kids, and um, he works on my car for me in exchange sometimes. Has my, has Jerry ever refused to bring the kids back in accordance with the uh, court's order? Not with the court's order, but we had traded time and he did not bring them back to me when he agreed that he would. Did he bring them back at a later time? Yes, he did. Okay. How much later was he? He was supposed to bring them back to me on Friday morning. I didn't get them back until Sunday evening. Do you know when the uh, first child support order, the temporary one after the first hearing, was entered by the court? No, I do not. If I were to say I, that it appears it was entered after at a hearing on June the 26th of this year, would that sound, would that sound accurate? Yeah, that might be accurate. Are you aware your, yourself either? Um, are you aware yourself of how long it takes the uh, state of Michigan to start uh, taking child support out of someone's checks or, or garnishing someone doing whatever they need to do to get it after a child support order gets entered? Yeah, I know it takes a month or so sometimes. Okay. So I was just waiting. You mentioned that the Wednesdays are not good uh, for midweek visits with Jerry. Is that correct? Yes. Because it's it's disruptive to your schedule? Yes. Is there another day uh, during the week that would be better? Say Monday, Tuesday? No, not really. So not one day out of the week would be acceptable for Jerry to see the boys for a little while. We're very busy during the week. It's very hard to find some extra time. I was a little confused by your testimony regarding what the time period when Jerry, you claimed Jerry was depositing about $6,000 or um, cashing $6,000 checks from his employer. When was, when do you claim this was? It was be before COVID. Do you have anything, anything more specific? It was just a couple years before then. I'm not really sure when exactly. And so the approximately thirteen thousand dollars that you took from the pre from the uh, joint account is you haven't spent any money on it, not a dime. No, not out of it at all. You mentioned a you mentioned going to a lawyer. I don't want you to get into anything that this lawyer has told to you um, earlier. Um, in the case, was that your current attorney? Which, which, um, comment was that? Miss, was that Miss Kirkpatrick? Or I don't know what, which comment you're asking about. Um, let me ask, let me do it better. Um, how many attorneys have you hired uh, for a divorce so far this year? There have been four. Just in this calendar year? Yes. Which company do you get your textbooks from when you, uh, for homeschooling? The Good and the Beautiful for all the other courses and um, Saxon Math for math. Did I hear correctly that the children are not required to do any state testing? Yes. Are they, 
are they voluntarily doing any kind of state testing? No, there's testing on the online program we use. That's all we do. And what is that online program? It's just on what they learned on the day, the, the math and things like that. They do little quizzes on it to make sure they're learning everything. Okay. Could you remind me, or maybe you haven't mentioned it, what is the name of that online program? It's called Discovery K-12. Did you ever obtain a PPO, a personal protection order against my client? No, I didn't. Have you called the police um, at any point since he started getting parenting time? No. Have you ever called the police on Jerry? Only when I went to get my things out of the house. That was earlier this year? Yes, it was the pets that I went to get, not my things. And you did ask to return to the marital home to get some things after uh, separating? Yes, I did several okay. times. Did you at any point ask if you could go in there yourself? Yes, he would not let me. And at that point, was it your plan to go in there alone? Um, no, I was going to take a friend with me or anybody he would allow, really. Is this your first experience actually, is homeschooling these children your first experience actually teaching? Yes. Okay. And what is their daily schedule? Uh, we do homeschool in the evening usually. So um, during the day, we usually do things with friends or whatever we're going to do that day. And then we do school. So when does school, what time does school start? It varies every day. If we're hiking till three, then we'll do it when we get back. Art class is only till one, so we'll do it when we get back from that. Is the only person you've contacted to obtain the funds to, to buy Jerry out of the marital home your mother? Yes. And is it your testimony that she can lend you all of the money that would be necessary? Yes, she can. Is she here today to confirm that? No. We were unable to continue mediation yesterday, is that correct? Yes. And was that because you weren't able to afford it? Yes. And you're also asking that Jerry pay your attorney fees um, because you cannot afford them? Yes. Okay. Um, did it occur to you to reach out to your, presumably the, uh, the cost of mediation and your attorney fees are less than $90,000, is that correct? Yes. Did you ever ask your mother if she could help you paying off your attorney fees and um, and uh, mediation fees? No, I didn't. What would be your plan to pay your mother back? Then we would work out some kind of monthly fee that I would pay her. Based on your current income, how long do you think it would take you to pay her back? I don't know, I haven't done the math. But it's your belief that your mother would accept any amount? Yeah, we haven't really talked about it in detail. She just wants us to be safe somewhere safe. She's willing to help us. So to clarify, is that money that would be coming from your mother a gift or loan? Um, she didn't really specify yet. Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. In a moment and let me I had some questions let me get to that before we turn it back over to Miss Kirkpatrick <clears throat> ma'am you stated that you uh I think you were one or just short of getting your uh associate's degree in teaching is that correct um a, a teaching degree is four years but I had was six credit hours away from finishing the half of the degree which is the associate's degree But you took, as you stated, you took some other classes. I think one of them was essential oils, and then there was another one. I can't, I don't have my note right. Present. Yeah. You took those classes, but didn't think to 
take the uh, any of the uh, six credit hours remaining for your associate's degree? These classes were only like $25, $30, and they were one day for like three hours. Well, again, that wasn't my question. The question was, so you didn't think to complete the uh, six credit hours that you had to get your associate's degree? No, that wasn't something that I thought about doing, and he really discouraged me from doing that. You had stated that I think when you were working at the assisted living, you're working uh, two 12-hour shifts uh, or two days of 12-hour shifts, correct? Yes. And you're able to do that? Yeah. You stated that you believe that your husband may have had another, some sort of other account and uh, but you said there was a letter that came to the house, but you didn't open it, correct? Yes, it was um, some kind of 401k account. How would you know that if you didn't open it? It looked exactly like the fidelity fidelity one that came to the house. Okay, so you don't know. You're just speculating that it that because it looked the envelope looked like that. Um, he did have some opened ones in the closet that I saw that had amounts on them. You said that uh, you had previously at one point you had worked in back in 2007 doing some child care is that correct yes i did daycare with a friend in her home and you said that that occurred when uh, samuel was little as you said yes he was an infant then but your testimony was you said you took all the boys with you bryce would go and get on the bus there and go to school quentin was a toddler and sammy was an infant and they would all go with me Okay, when you said boys, I was I was looking at the boys that are yeah. minors at this point. So Logan and Elijah were not around at that time. No, they were not born yet. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't think I have anything further. Ms. Kirkpatrick, any uh, redirect? No, I don't believe so. Okay. Well, that doesn't leave anything for you, Mr. Momoff. No, it doesn't, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Kirkpatrick, uh, next witness. I have no further witness. I rest, Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Umloff, do you have any rebuttal? Um, could I meet with my client in a breakout room briefly? Sure. We'll put you in a breakout room and uh, we'll basically put uh, you back in a waiting room, Ms. Kirkpatrick. And um, how long do you think you'll need, Mr. Umloff? Five minutes. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Umloff. There was. There was some testimony by Amber regarding retire an, another retirement account. Do you have another retirement account other than the one we've disclosed? No. Okay. What do you think she is referring to? Uh, Rosler, the previous job, um, that any retirement account there, when I left that job, that was cashed out, and I used that to pay for expenses on the house and cars, et cetera. So that, when did that, you leave that? Sorry. Uh that was over 10 years ago. I was at my last job 10 years. I don't think of the date, not on top of my head. Sorry. Okay. Do you believe that COVID-19 is a hoax? COVID-19 is real and it killed a lot of people. So you do not believe it's a hoax? It is not a hoax. Were you ever opposed to vaccinations for your children? Um, I'm not opposed to my children getting vaccinated or my wife. Um, people have their choice to get vaccinated. There was testimony regarding a disagreement over whether to take one of your children to the doctor after he was cut on his finger. Do you recall that instance? Yes, I do. Okay. When did this occur? I, I don't have an exact date. It would have been several years ago, eight, eight, eight years ago, 10 years ago. Could you tell us what happened? Um, I don't, I, I, I think he cut his finger on a, a broken glass that had fallen, you know, and mm -hmm. so it cut his skin. So I had to make sure that there's no glass in it, cleaned it out, uh, put the ointment on it and bandaged it up correctly so that the skin would be together so that it would heal correctly without a scar. And did you do that? Yes, I did. Okay. And did it appear from your observations that he needed to go to the hospital? 
that did not appear to my observations that he needed to go to the hospital. And to be clear, you're not, you don't have medical training. Is that right? I do not have medical training. But you dealt um, both yourself growing up and having other children. You've, you've dealt with cuts, bruises, and scrapes before. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, and which child was it again? It was Logan. Okay. Did Logan suffer long-term harm because of the, because he did not go to the hospital that day? No, he did not. Okay. Are there any guns in your home? There are no guns in my home. Okay. Were there guns in your home previously? Yes. When did you, when did you take them out? Uh, it would have been in May. Of this year? Of this year. Why is that? I didn't want anyone breaking in and getting their hands on them. When the guns were in your home, what did you do to make sure your children were safe from um, playing with them or something like that? Um, the ammo is kept separately in a room. Um, the bolts are taken out of uh, it, so the gun parts are taken apart, and they have locks that go in the trigger area. And those locks prevent the trigger from being pulled? That is correct. And did you, and where was the key? It's in my pocket. Okay. So the children could not have gotten uh, access to those, at least not to, to, not to use them. Is that correct? That is correct. As it relates to the Ford Mustang Cobra, were you still making payments on it after you got married? Uh, I believe I finished making payments on June of 2003. So there was a short window of time after after your marriage that you were still making payments on it? Yes. Is that correct? Okay. And how many payments were those? Or how, how much was each monthly payment? I'm sorry. Uh, 500 a month. That'd be... December, January, February, March, April, May, June. Seven months. Okay. Do you believe that your wife's health problems prevent her from working full time? I do not believe her health problems keep her from working. Is her testimony that you used to brag to your family and friends about how well the kids were doing? Um, in homeschooling accurate? Yes, I, I support my kids and I encourage them to feel good about homeschooling to try to encourage it. Did there come a point where you changed changed your mind about homeschooling? Uh, when, when she left the home, um, my kids' education became a concern to me. Had you been having doubts before then? About homeschool? No. Is it accurate that the children missed part of the judging on the 4-H fair in the uh, incident that both you uh, and your wife described in your testimonies? If it was, I was unaware of it. Uh, she told me what times they needed to be there for what they needed to do. Um, so I made sure they were there for that. If I was not communicated that information, then I wouldn't have known. Is it accurate that you started recording your interactions with her? Yes, I started recording and I made sure she knew I was recording. And why did you do that? Just uh, in case there's any hearsay or just just for some security, maybe. Did you ever order your wife to order, to order things using her credit card? Uh, if I needed, uh, you know, a pair of slippers ordered or a pillow, you know, she'd, she'd order it for me. But did you yeah. order her to do it or did you ask? I asked. Sorry, order. I'm you know, I'm thinking ordering something like I understand. Uh, I need something. Sorry, no, I I don't order her to do it. If she doesn't want, she didn't want to do it. I would do it myself. I just ask her out of kindness.
Did you ever threaten to kill yourself? No, I have not. Okay. Were you? Did you yell at your children during that period of time leading up to losing your job? No, I did not. Okay. Did you yell at your wife during that period of time? No, I did not. And after you lost your job and you were now staying at home, did you yell at the, your children or your wife? No, I did not yell at my children and I did not yell at my wife. Did you tell your wife you were trying to get fired? No, I did not. I was not trying to get fired. I actually loved my job. Was there a point in time where she, um, your wife was expecting the children to be returned to her on a Friday morning and they came back on a Sunday evening? Uh, that's, I believe she's referring to the time when the school schedule changed. Um, because when the school schedule starts, it changes the times I see them. And since the school schedule moved out a couple of weeks, that meant I got them the, the whole week instead mm -hmm. of taking them back when school started. Um, so I think that's where the confusion is. It was a very confusing time, um, but we worked together to make sure the kids got to where they needed to be. And so I, I, I felt I was following the parenting time schedule at that point. Because it it is it turned into a summer schedule at that point when the school starting date moved. Other than the instance involving Logan cutting his finger, have you ever had a disagreement with your wife regarding um, medical care for the children? No, I have not. Now it's it's clear to the court you disagree on on whether the children should be homeschooled or not. Is that fair? I would like my children to go to public schools. Public schools have a lot to offer. Um, you know, the, they got counselors, they got extracurricular programs, they, they cover a full course of subjects and different subjects that they can choose from. They'll also be around a lot of, a lot of kids their own age that they can interact with, meet new friends and learn how to interact with people more so from a social aspect. But you haven't unilaterally enrolled them in Battle Creek Public Schools, have you? I have not. Okay. I, I would like to. Okay. But you haven't, you've chosen not to unilaterally do that because we have this court case where we're asking the judge to make an order. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, was her testimony regarding the condition of the various pets when she came back to your house in late April or early May with the police accurate? That was not accurate. The pets were fed and watered daily. I took care of them. I would pet the birds, pet the chinchilla. And you clean their habitats as well? I would clean their cages also. Were any of the young chickens killed? Not to my knowledge. Okay. Uh, there are mink here. Okay. Just letting you know, they eat chickens, but no, I'd was unaware of any of them disappeared. Did you ever tell her regarding things like soccer and 4-H, meaning or tell her, meaning your wife, that uh, because she signed them up, it's her problem, she had to figure out how to get them there? No, I have not. I've actually taken them to many activities on the soccer and such. It was a busy time. You were accused of having an extramarital affair during the testimony. Did you ever have an extramarital affair? 16 years ago. It was short. I regretted it. Um, her and I worked it out, as she mentioned, and I've, I've been faithful ever since. And... Is there any truth to the defendant's testimony regarding you cashing paychecks and putting large amounts of cash in that safe? No, I did not put any large amounts of cash in a safe. Okay. Did you at any time keep cash in a safe during the marriage? There, it, there was some for a while there, but it all got spent and uh, the money just kept going into the bank instead. I don't have any money in a safe. So this would have been many years ago? This was many years ago. Was it ever as much as $100,000? No. 
Do you have an estimate of the most you ever kept in a safe at any point in time during the marriage? There's maybe 15,000 in there. And I know I, I used 10 of it to go towards the Yukon. Nothing further. Okay. Ms. Kirkpatrick, any uh, cross? Um, yes. So, Mr. Pardeek, um, did you get a chance to look at Defendant's Exhibit 7, which were some text messages between you and Amber? Oh, let me see if I can find them. Ms. Kirkpatrick, I'll just ask, does this go to uh, any of the uh, questioning by Mr. Umloff? Yep, it's about how much he loves his job. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure I have. My Exhibit 7 is a credit card bill. I don't know what she's really referring to. Okay. I, I, if I can clarify, I think he's referring to my Exhibit 7 that I that I submitted to the court. Um, Nancy, do you have the ability to use share screen? Oh, my God, no. Oh, excuse me. Um, I'm just referring to one one um statement that he made um let me try to read it to him so mr party on or about january excuse me february 23rd 2023 did you say to your wife over text message hi work sucks as usual going one day at a time Maybe hour to hour, the doldrum of depression is me. Good to hear from you. That almost sounds poetic. Okay. Did you say that to your wife? It sounds like something I might write. I, I, I like to write poetic stuff. Some of it's dull. Some of it's exciting. Um, okay. That doesn't sound to me like you... We're loving your job at the end of February of this year. Well, in February, the skies are gray for several months. And, you know, that, that, I mean, it's, it's an emotion. I mean, it, it, sometimes I express myself and let my thoughts come out. I mean, they're, it's like a Pisces. You know, okay. that's just thinking, being poetic. She knows I'm poetic. Okay, so did you love your job? Or does work suck as usual? Go yes, on hour to hour. Yes, I love my job. Okay. At one point, you had 15000 in cash in a safe and ten you used to buy the Yukon. Is that what your testimony just was? Yes. Okay. Uh, this morning, you said you never had any money in the account, in the, in the, in the um, safe. I do not have any money in the safe. So you used to have money and you don't now. Is that what you're saying? That was a long time ago. Okay. So if you are not opposed to the children being um, inoculated, um, why aren't they? They don't. And, and flu shots and and chicken box and other things. They did not want the COVID vaccine. Okay, so you're saying you were good with it. It was the boys that didn't want it. If they wanted the COVID vaccine, they could have gotten it. Okay. COVID was real. All right. So the last my client knew there were guns in your bedroom closet. Is that the case? When she left, there were guns in the bedroom closet, right? I, I removed guns from the house in May. Okay. She hasn't been in your bedroom since April. Is that correct? That's not correct. Okay, when was she in your bedroom after April? 
on June 6th, she stopped by to get some of her clothes. Okay. She went into your bedroom? There with my mother. Okay. What did she get? She got some of her belongings, clothes, shoes. What did Amber get? Ask her. I'm asking you, were you there? I was there. Why did you move the guns out of the bedroom? I didn't want anyone to break in and steal them, get a hold of them with what was going on. So Amber, basically, you didn't want her to break into your, her own house and steal your guns. Is that what you're saying? I think you're drawing conclusions here. Okay. Well, I'm asking you, who were you afraid was going to break into your house? I never said I was afraid. I said I didn't want them here during what's going on. I didn't know if she would show up in the middle of the night or what. Or, yeah. I just wanted to make sure. Okay. So when you took them out of the house, where did they go? They're in a safe place. Okay. Where is that? That's confidential. All right. Thank you. Nothing else, Mr. Kirkpatrick? Nope, nothing else. Anything else, Mr. Elmoff? You testified earlier, Mr. Pardeek, that you love your job. Is that correct? That is correct. Is it your testimony that you've never had a bad day at work? Some days at work are bad. Um, is, it boss, is it likely that if you send a text like the one that was just read aloud to you, um, by Ms. Kirkpatrick that you would have said that you may have sent that to your wife on a particularly bad day at work or a boring day? Yeah, that's possible. Absolutely. Nothing further. Anything else, Ms. Kirkpatrick, as a result of that? No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Any other uh, rebuttal, uh, Mr. Elmoff? None, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Kirkpatrick, any rebuttal? No rebuttal. Okay, thank you. Well, I think at this point, uh, <clears throat> why don't we do this is why don't we uh, adjourn for the day as I do have to get staff out. <laughs> uh, and uh, what we'll do is we'll start on uh, Tuesday, 8.30 on uh, 11.14. Uh, 2023. And then at that time, we'll start out uh, with uh, closing arguments, and then I'll go into uh, court's finding at that time. Okay. Anything else, Mr. Amloff, before we conclude? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Kirkpatrick? No, sir. Okay. Thank you all. We'll excuse you. And